Hi guys, it's me Chatter HD and welcome to the final incident analysis video of the 2019 Formula 1 season and of course we're going to analyse the key incidents from the 2019 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and go on with the incidents, how they happened during the Grand Prix. So let's start off first on the first lap with Lance Stroll and Pierre Gasly and look at why Pierre Gasly had the contact he had and why his race was ruined basically instantly so you can see here stroll heading towards turn one and then once we get to turn one the reason gasly had his accident and lost his front wing and got hit from the rear is because he locked up going into turn one ran a bit wide but because perez was always going to take the racing line on the outside on the exit of turn one unless pierre deliberately went off track there was nothing pierre was going to do to avoid an accident because as you see later on they make contact, Perez and Gasly. And I will say, Sergio Perez, very, very lucky not to have a rear right uh, puncture because Gasly did hit him quite hard and then Lance Stroll hit Gasly from the rear. So that's why Gasly fell off the track and that's why Pierre Gasly in the end had an absolutely horrible race. And in terms of apportioning blame, I don't think you can really blame Sergio Perez because I think he had every right to take the racing line. Yeah, Gasly, I understand why he tried to stay on track, but maybe he could have ran a bit further off track to avoid contact with Perez. But uh, Stroll definitely has to take the majority of the blame because he slammed into Pierre Gasly at turn one uh, quite clearly. But now, let's get on to the great racing we had between Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc for what was second place in the Grand Prix. Now, the two cars, Leclerc and Verstappen, coming up across a back marker. Charles Leclerc, you know, would have known that Max Verstappen was very fast and he would have known that he would have had to defend his position very, very hard for Max Verstappen to not get second place from himself. Now, the reason Max got second place is because simply, as you'll see right now, Charles Leclerc did not defend his position anywhere near hard enough against a driver like Max Verstappen. Because at this point, Max was always going to go for the inside if Charles Leclerc did not cover the inside line properly, which he didn't do. Charles Leclerc at this point really should be a lot further to the inside of the corner already because Max Verstappen is already in the slipstream, had a great run off the last corner because of the fresher tyres. Charles Leclerc really should already be defending the inside line, but because... He does not. By this point, the position is lost because Max Verstappen is one of those drivers that if you give him enough space, then you're you're done. You're finished. He will punish you. He will get the position just like he did in Schol uh, did to Charles Leclerc in Austria. If you give him enough space, he will punish you and he will get the position. And that's exactly what he did as Verstappen then went down the inside of Charles Leclerc. And then the reason Leclerc into the next chicane on the next DRS straight got a great run was because he got a slightly better exit from this chicane. And then, as I move on to the next picture, the reason Leclerc had a great run around the outside is because he deliberately took this, you know, outer line to go around the outside to try and get the position back. But because Leclerc did not have as good a tyres at this point as Max Verstappen, and Verstappen was so keen to keep the position, even though Charles Leclerc was briefly back ahead, realistically, Max Verstappen was never going to lose that position. But I have to say, again, between these two, great racing, great to see. But Charles Leclerc, for the second time this season, could have done more to keep Max Verstappen behind in a fight for position. And now we will go on to two battles that we had at the end of the Grand Prix that we did not get to see in the live TV broadcast. First off, Sergio Perez overtaking Lando Norris for P7. Now, Lando Norris going into the triple chicane at the end of the second DRS straight is defending the inside line. Perez, of course, final lap, he's trying to go for it to get that P7. And at this point, Lando is doing everything right. And at this point, even, when Perez... Is clearly going for it around the outside, similar to how Charles Leclerc tried to. Lando is still doing everything right, but in the next frame, you'll see Lando makes a quite a critical mistake, which allows Sergio Perez to 
get the position. Because at this point, Lando Norris is way too far over to the left here. What he should have done, if I go back a frame, is what he should have done after covering the inside is then move straight across to where Perez ultimately went to, about here, to cover that space. But because he didn't do that and left too much space around the outside for Sergio Perez to go around the outside, that's why Perez on the fresher tyres, much fresher tyres, was able to pass Lando Norris. So definitely quite a big mistake at the end of the Grand Prix. And even Lando said that he should have done a lot better in this instance because he simply allowed Sergio Perez way too much space to get that position. But Lando, I think at the end of the day, considering how quick Perez was at the end of the race, I think Lando at the end of the day still did very well to be fighting Perez this hard on the final lap. And also we had, as I move on from that incident, we had the racing between Carlos Sainz and Nico Hulkenberg, where Carlos Sainz just about nicked a point at the end of the day, and he got P6 in the Drivers' Championship with this overtake. Now, again, we did not see this during the live broadcast because they were busy showing fireworks. I don't understand either why they would show that instead of this great piece of racing. So, again, heading towards the same chicane where Sergio Perez just passed Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz is in the slipstream of Nico Hulkenberg. And Hulkenberg, I think the biggest mistake Hulkenberg made here was not covering the inside line as aggressively as, say, Lando Norris did. He kind of, Hulkenberg hovered in the middle of the track in a way that kind of illustrated that he didn't know where Carlos Sainz was going to go. So what Carlos did simply was uh, sell him a dummy that Carlos was going to go around the outside and then... He pulled to the inside and then went down the inside of Nico Hulkenberg and locked up his inside front of Science when he got to the corner. So he only just about got the move done. But still, a great move by Carlos Science. Why did we not see this live on TV? I don't get it. This was a great overtake. One of the best we've had in the last few races. And we didn't get to see it live because we have to see fireworks. I honestly do not understand how that even, you know, happens in the, you know, in the FOM TV broadcast. But those guys are the incidents for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix of 2019. I just want to say again, thank you guys so much for 2019. And when it comes to these videos, analyzing the incidents, I want to just say thank you guys for watching these videos, supporting these videos, and, you know, giving your opinions so many times on all the incidents I've analyzed this season, such as the Vettel-Hamilton incident in Canada, Verstappen-Leclerc in Austria, uh, where else? Leclerc-Hamilton in, in Italy. There's so many great uh, pieces of racing this season, so many controversial incidents that I've analysed. Uh, some I've took some flack for, but I don't really care. It's my opinion at the end of the day. But I just want to say again, thank you guys so much for coming along for these videos, interacting, and just sharing your opinion on the incidents from each Grand Prix in 2019. And I will have this series, of course, returning in 2020. And it will be, if I can bring in the improvements that I want to bring in to these types of videos, then they are going to be quite a bit different in 2020. Possibly, I will be using a green screen with me on camera uh, next year to better illustrate, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I am analysing these incidents from a Grand Prix. So hopefully I can bring those in next year because it would make these videos much better than they already are. But guys, thanks for coming along for this video. Don't forget to comment down below what you thought of the incidents and pieces of racing from the Grand Prix. And let me know also in the comments uh, down below what has been the best overtake or, you know, the best or say most controversial moment of the season that you'll look back on and say that was, you know, the most controversial of 2019. Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this coming in 2020. Also hit the like button as well. And guys, until my live podcast tomorrow night at 7pm UK time, where me and Nib are going to review the 2019 season for a couple hours and go through 
every team and every drive and look at all the you know championship tables and stuff like that until then guys it has been me kazar hd goodbye